Burma Company is Black Series Edition LLC. Crystal Edge Technology Screens and our FLE BT Technology, which I'm still working on. All right, trying to get over here to this music. Come on, man, just work with me. We were just here five minutes ago. Are we on here? There we go. Make sure we ain't got no copyright free, copyright music playing in the background. So let me see what we got going on over here. All right, so this is, uh, yeah, I'm pretty late in the shop right now. All right, some things I got to wrap up, some things I got to do. I've been updating on the website, some other stuff I'm working on. I deleted the other video because, again, it was too long. And right now I'm trying to get myself to a point where I'm just not making videos that long. Like the the, um, the other videos, the ones we joined together, they're faster. But the talking, it, it's just too much for me. That's why I deleted the video. It's not a big deal. So I got to come in and keep them short and sweet. Whew, man. But anyway, let's get to this so we can get this done. But anyway, as I told you before that we have that new screen paint we're working on. Um, it should be... Uh, ready to go probably tomorrow um, I have an installment to do which I'm gonna be going down to the smoke shop because um, they had to wait for some equipment to get there I needed to uh, hang the projector and they were waiting to get the uh, the bracket system in so they can hang the projector for putting their screen in so I'll be down there probably Thursday no no I can't do it Thursday uh, I said Wednesday because tomorrow is Tuesday so Tuesday what am I doing on Tuesday? Oh, I got stuff coming in on Tuesday. So Tuesday, I got stuff coming in on Tuesday. And I do want to get a chance to blast this surface. I got to get the customers ready because they ship out on the 28th. So Wednesday is the day that I have time to go down and take care of what I'm going to be doing at the smoke shop. I'll be going down there. Well, actually, it's more like a smoke lounge or lounge smoke. But anyway, you'll see me when I'm down there. I'll, I'll pop up on camera and I'll show you what we're working on. But I had to wait for the bracket system to get there for the projectors that we picked out for them. And they took forever to get there. So they just sent me pictures on the, the brackets are there. But I have to uh, wait for some pr stuff that's coming here tomorrow. So I can't go tomorrow. And then I still have to make this stuff, which I'm going to be spraying to this surface to do the projector mapping applications for that technology. And then um, Thursday, I got orders to go up for customers. So I had to do it on Wednesday. Friday, I'm going to be working on basically getting ready to set up the next formula for the acoustic screens. So I can see how busy my day is. And I'm not even anywhere near done because I still, before the summertime kicks here, before it even gets here, I got to have my t-shirts done, business cards and brochures done, and another cell phone so I can link up my signal on another line so I can do my demonstrations in all the places I'll be renting out. Whew, man, it just sounds like so much, I swear, when you put it all together. But anyway, this is screens we're designing for the projector mapping application. I told you, they're not designed for basically for watching movies off. They're basically designed for visual effects. So each one of those strips right there, I can change that into anything I want with projector mapping application. And oh, I just remember, I literally forgot to order the freaking pen. There's a pen I'm supposed to order for the mouse because the mouse makes it a pain in the neck to freaking draw on the screen. So... I ordered this mouse pad that allows me to draw on the mouse pad, which I can connect that to my computer, and I can draw and stuff like that, so I can make it easier for me to do designs on this. Because, again, I've got myself involved in several different um, group uh, communities for projector mapping, visual effects, special effects, and I've been showing off a couple of the labels, and they're curious what we got, so this is what we're building. So this is one of the pieces of work we're going to do. Uh, the other one we're going to be doing is a fountain. We're actually going to build a nice little cave or cove or whatever you want to call it put some nice stonework around it little plants around it and we're going to make it actually like there's actual water coming out of it of course we use that for projector mapping application uh beautiful thing about it is the entire thing is going to be all black so everything we coat is going to be all black and we can bring it to life with our technology you're going to freaking love this um the other thing i'm going to be working on too next after that is the vortex there's another piece of artwork i want to work on and some other things now like i said we got everything that covers when it comes to movie screens and all that cool stuff and outdoor and gaming and all that stuff. So I want to do something with the equipment I spent all this money for. Get a chance to get what I paid for out of this technology. Um, what projector are we going to be running for this? <sighs> Most likely the Sony. 
Probably get a Sony. Probably get a Sony on it. Huh, there would just be no point. Let me see if I'm ahead. Let me do a basic test run real quick. Let's see exactly. I'll take the Sony projector over there. Set up the projector mapping equipment. Where the freak is my stuff? I'll tell you, I spent all day long searching for stuff. So, I'm gonna come over here. We can't use this, this projector right here because this is not gonna work. We're going to need the Sony. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a little testing real quick. See if we got the cord here. I'm curious. Majority of projector mapping doesn't have any sound. So how do they synchronize music for it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no way. How do they do that? I gotta look into that. I'm curious how that's even done. Um equipment's over here. This is something I've been dying to work with because you know I really don't use my projector mapping all that much. Uh, we're gonna need another monitor. Uh, can I run it through? Let me see. I think I got a second monitor right here somewhere. I'm not sure where I put it at. He's watching his monitor. That's where my cat's so weird sometimes. He's over there literally watching his monitor. So he has a small monitor where I have the fire stick plugged up, where I have cat TV plugged in. And it's just just shows nothing but hours and hours of cat TV. Alright, let me see. This is the camera system. So that's another one here. I'm not going to plug this cat TV. He's enjoying his TV. Um, let me see. Adapter system. I know you had a micro adapter system for anything I wanted to plug up. I'm curious why I stuck in that. So I told you I never plan anything, I just take it as it goes along. I'm trying to figure out what in Sam Hill. Why is that not in here? Of all places, that needs to be in here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't know where that's at. But it should be in here. It definitely should be in this bag. Because I use that bag for my equipment and stuff. So it should be in that bag. So let me see what we got going on here.
Sorry, people. I never planned for any of this stuff, but just trying to figure out exactly what I did with this. Oh, that definitely shouldn't be in there. See, this is it. Maybe a little bit. Oh, man. I put it in the most jacked up places. Why do I put stuff in the wooded places ever? I know I'm going to eat this stuff later on. Yeah, I put stuff in the wooded places. You can possibly think of. Put up somewhere safe. Oh, my life, I swear. That's definitely it. Alright. I wanted to set this up real quick, but I have a small adapter unit that I bought for my uh, my projector. One of my mini projectors, as far as this really micro adapter, it's a brand new system, and I've lost in the land of whatever. Which is probably over in the big box. Which if it's in there, forget it. I do not feel like getting to that freaking horror show to find something. Uh, one of these things I'll have to so organized one day. <sighs> Let me see. No, 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 that's plugged over there. We have to have a second one. And the adapter unit is nowhere to be found. We should have been in this box. But I got a weird feeling it's in that box, which it should not be in that box. Oh, man. Sheesh. Come on, we're going to have to sort all this stuff out. Just sort everything out tomorrow. Find all the important stuff that I definitely do need. And make sure that I have it. Where it needs to be at. That literally should have been up here. Not over there. Should have definitely been over there. Alright, whatever. Okay, let me put this up because this is supposed to be over here. That adapter system should have definitely been in that bag. Should have never been hidden over there in that box. Why would you stick it in that box? The ball place is that. That's the last place you wanted that. Last place you would want that at was over there. The last place. The barrier over there. Because you're just going to be forever trying to crack that thing down. That's going to be a headache to find. just going to have to figure out exactly where I put it at because it's not here but I did find some stuff I do need which should be in the smaller bag. Oh, mercy. Huh. That runs to that. That's not going to run to there. You got it in the big box. I'm going to have to find it anyway. You're going to need it anyway. Ugh. I need it for work anyway so. Might as well dig it up, go through the big box, and figure out where it's at, because I was stupid to put it over there. Because you knew you were going to need it. Buried things in the dumbest places. So, it's in the big bag, the big box. I got a big box of tools I call the no return box. So I don't plan to go in there and basically get anything out of there. And that's where I stuck it at. It's stupid. Definitely gonna need the 
This is exactly what I need this right here, so I'm kind of going there anyway. I need those cables. Get out of the way. He was jinky for jinkies, 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 jinkies. We gotta go get the internet cable anyway. This is what I was looking for. That. Next time I have this in smaller books. I'm the big box of no return. I needed my salt too anyway, because I gotta take that back to the house because I got that cardboard that came in a day, and you're definitely not cutting that with a pair of scissors. I'll bring in a piece to show you how thick it is. You gotta bring this baby out to cut it, because yeah, that's not happening. And I don't want to use a hand saw because I don't want to rip it up. Why is this like this? Uh, let me see. Right. I like the way that looks. All right, perfect. This is good. I'll take the little leave out. Okay, now we got everything we need. Why in the world did I buy? 200 feet of cable. Oh, yeah. Because the place I was living at had concrete walls and the internet didn't pick up in that section. It only picked up on the back. So I had to run 100 feet of cable from one section to the next. Because the place I was living in had freaking concrete walls. Acoustics in that place were freaking amazing. But other than that, try to get internet in there. It was really weird. And I'll tell you something. Where that building was positioned, it was in the strangest spot ever. The reason why is because no freaking internet provider, for some reason, when they got to that area, wouldn't connect in there. It just wouldn't. Comcast, Verizon, none of them would pick up in that area. So that became a freaking headache. Let me see, internet. Just make sure I got cable wrapped around me. All right, so that's good right there. That's good to go. So we got this right here. 
that's hooked up. We need some power. Okay, we've got these cores on the floor. It's a catastrophe mess going on behind my floor right now. That's also some flat internet cable. Flat cable. Alright, let's see. Got everything here. We're good to go. Um, we got power for the projector. I'm probably up to swing into the other direction because. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot. I got HMI cable. We need HMI cable. Okay, this is going to go from here to here. Just a little bit to piece here. Get in there. Yeah, I got a busy couple of days. Coming up, at least the screen attachment installment is going to be easy because it's already done. I mean, last time I was in there, I basically coated that 150 inch that was sitting in the window. You saw the fish pushing through. I'm going to use the same screen. Just already built it built the frame built the material everything is done already all i got to do is go in there and figure out exactly where they're going to mount this projector at how where they're going, window they're going to put it in and then voila i'm done fast job ever did in my entire life for chance are why i'm down there they got some other stuff for me to do and they have some opportunities lined up for me i don't know about the opportunities to tell you the truth i already don't my plate's stacked already like i don't even know how i want to even i guess we'll figure a way around it to work everything out but what I mean by this summer, I'm busy, busy. I mean, this summer, I'm crazy busy. I'm going to be in and out of different locations showing this technology off. I'm planning to get this up to the next platform. With the ad tech and everything else we have, we're designing right now to get ready for summer. I'm going to be extremely busy. I'm going to be in a lot of shows. I got a lot of events I'm actually um, applied for. That's why I went down to City Hall. got that license and everything else taken care of. I'm get my venue license and all that stuff. All that stuff is finished. All I got to do is now is just show up with the technology and that's it. That's all I have to do. So it's good to have a couple of stores already with the technology already embedded into it so we can actually show it off. And he said he has no problem with having people come down and give me full credit for my work. Of course, you know, they're really cool people at the end of the day. So that's also too going to be fantastic. You know, we just got so much that I have to do. It's not even funny. So I got to squeeze everything in together. All right, so I think this is the last one we did. Was that dragon? Like I said before, you really can't see it all that well on the on the white surface because it's not going to pick up at all. Period. It's only going to read on our black technology. That's the only thing it's going to read. So you really won't be to see it until tomorrow. Until I go in and coat all that into black, and you'll be to see it. So all the structures and artwork and things we'll be designing will be just coated in jet black, and we'll just bring it to life with color. Because, you know, that's what our technology does. It creates color. Well, let's just get something psychedelic on this. See right here? I'm going to show you. So this right here is cardboard that's coated. See how crystal clear you can see everything? But if I go hit this on the surfaces, those cones that are white, it doesn't read anything at all, period. Yeah. That's the benefit of our black technology. So projector mapping, yes, our product actually is fantastic for projector mapping. All right, let me see. I'm gonna hook this up to over here. Notice we didn't put that down in our product that we do work with projector mapping. Mm. You don't know that because you don't actually have projector mapping equipment. Good luck trying to find the technology I got. <laughs> yeah, right. No one wants to give them up because they're actually fantastic. And the company stopped making a company out of business in COVID. So it's sad that they went out of business in COVID because, again, fantastic technology. But yeah, to get your hands on one of them, extremely rare. 
Got a better chance of a gorilla crashing through your roof singing Yankee Doodle Danny in French with 50 lottery tickets all in all winning in all states winning. That's how rare these things are to get. That's why I would never give mine up. And I've gotten offers for it, but nope, not gonna happen. Too hard to find. Nobody wants to get rid of them. That's a fantastic unless you're gonna you can go buy the other one, the other form of projector mapping, but it costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Let me see. Um, all right, I need my, where's the adapter piece? We just found that adapter box. Here we go. Okay, which one needs to go in? Because my cat's over there watching his TV. I'm not taking his TV. Try to keep this video short, but like I said, I have to find parts. So. Go with that. Alright, I think this one is going to fit for the back. Let's see which one of these adapters are going to feed for the back of this. It's definitely not going to work. Maybe this one. Oops, see right there. I need these adapters. I need you guys. Let's see. Come on. I got a universal adapter too. So. Nope, not you. And definitely not you. Oh wow, but one of these suckers fit. Definitely not you. Ah, we found one. Actually, it fit. Okay. Let's see if this one works. Nightmares from Universal Adapters. Let's see. Was the first one. Ha ha ha! Yeah! Never mind, you got yours, you're good. It was the first adapter. The first adapter worked. The first one. Cool. Alright, let me see what we're doing here. Alright, I gotta go into my programs for this one. Let's get you guys out of here. Put my view in here. What's this all about over here? I forgot we're in basically portrait mode. So we should be good. This let's open up this file here so I get access to this program over here. I'm gonna have to transfer that entire program onto a flash drive. Oh, yeah, I had to transfer to a flash drive. I should have been had it to a flash drive just in case my system crashes. I just I'm gonna upload that tonight. Get that whole thing onto a flash drive. See, are we connected? We should be connected. Where are we linked to? Where we are connected. <laughs> oh, excuse me, people. Go from there. Okie dokie. We are linked. Let me see. I want to see where I'm coming up under my camera. Let me see for a minute. Guys, I'm going to put you to the side real quick. Because I got cables and wires all over the floor. It's a mess over here. Right, there we go. Let's see how much of this we need to expand up. That's pretty much it. Gee, this is the reason why we don't want to shirt those on these things. I really never get enough room to expand the whole thing. It's just not going to work. All right, we're just going to bring it back some. Now, it's step forward at the coding that we're developing. It's not going to be designed for movie theater effects. No, 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 sorry. It's not going to be designed for movie theater screens. So, 
Don't buy it for that, please. We got so much technology on freaking movie screen. Technology is not even funny. But we always get that one. It'll be in big bow writing. Can't miss it. Do not buy it. Because again, it's not going to work well for you. It's going to come out pretty bad. And we're not going to refund your money. Because I basically explained to you, don't do it. So don't do it. But you'd be surprised. Like the knockoff projector thing. I'll tell people with these knockoff projectors, don't buy stuff. And they'll go out and buy it anyway. And they'll tell you, don't do it. Don't do it. Now, the other stuff that we have, the black silver, will support. But not those knockoff projectors. Not those Candyland knockoff projectors. Those cheap ones you see, they got them weird, crazy names attached to them. It's not supporting that. More like the Valve or Wemax them. I say a bit of a higher grade kind of uh, knockoff. Yeah. All right, let's get you guys over here. I'm going to free you from my stand. I got wires and cables all over the floor. Okay. And I'm going to do my scanning real quick. There we go. So my scan should be reading. There's my scan popping up right now. Boy, I remember I was the first one. To, actually, I was one of the first ones. Actually, I'm not saying first, first one. Other people had it besides me. But I was in that group of those people who were purchasing, first purchasing the system. Man, it has some bugs in it, man. I still have the rant videos on the bugs, but after a while, you kind of figure it out. Yeah. I mean, you've done a little programming. It should be easy to navigate, but some people didn't have that particular skill set. I had some problems with it. But once I got all the bugs out, it ran perfectly. Just had to... You were tech... <laughs> you literally were tech support. A lot of you not. When I thought this when it first came out, you literally was freaking tech support. Oh, man. I'm going to go back and make some of my videos of rants on this. Like, what the freak? Like, really? Then you find out that people were trying to set accounts up. That was the worst thing you could ever do. It wouldn't even read or accept your account. So I have no account attached to this. So let me show you what my system brings up. See right here. That's what it'll bring up right there, see. So let's see know right from there. So we are already have scanned. The screen's already scanned. We can paint it any way you want. Cool thing about this black technology, like I said, once we coat this all in black, everything will be designed all in black. Is that we can take um, like a house, we can coat it all in black technology. I can color everything I want on the house, the color that I want, because that technology will read it and bring it through. That's the fun thing about this stuff. So imagine you just have one big black crown and you can cover whatever you want, that giant black crown, and you can come in and you can add color anywhere you want. I can make people look out, oh my goodness, well, we just designed one of those. We're just giving me a freaking Barbie house and just coat that entire thing black with the technology and just bring the whole entire thing to life. That'd be freaking sick. Why not? I think I'm going to do that. Look on eBay and find me an old Barbie house and freaking coat it with black technology. All right, let me see. So we get to paint with this thing. So this is going to be my pen. Scoop stuff out of the way. Um, can I go with this one first? So we paint? No, 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 no. I need to paint. I need to paint. I need to brush up. What do we got here? I'm gonna do stripes. Do stripes. That's why we need a pen. So we'll just do the stripes in between the boxes. And we'll start that up high first. So we're painting the black in between the stripes. I think the first three we're going to do. Um, let's get and create that right there. That right there. Let's see. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's get something from the library. Let's get something from their library. That looks pretty cool. Where's that other one going? Oh, that's going to look freaking sick. I'll take that. Insane, insane. Now mind you, the black technology behind it is only coated with FLE. It's not coated with the new stuff. So nothing's coated in the stuff. And it hasn't been made yet. It'll be made tomorrow. But right, just give it a test run. So let's go over here and let's hit the publish. And we shall have between here, here, and here. And between the black already coated.
That allows me to pinpoint where to go. This mic's after this. Okay, let me see. There we go. Uh, let me see. Be much better to get coated in all flat. I want to run some fish through there. All right, that's first layer. Let me get a second layer on that. Let me see. I'm gonna get my paintbrush. Hmm. I think I got the whole box on this side. I'm just gonna coat that whole box on this side. And let me see. Change that surface down like that. Let's see. We're also going to do a, a mesh screen, a micro mesh screen, and show you how to make a hologram screen. These are pretty fun to do. I'll show you how to build one of those. So we'll mess around with that for a little bit too. Oh, can I get something out of my collection? Look at my collection. Oh, this is Starfield? Oh, what's that right there? That looks sick, but it doesn't move. I want something that moves. Definitely want something that moves. Let me see. Oh, uh, does this move? Oh, wait, no, no, give me this one. I'll take that and see. That looks pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Does that move? Oh, it does move. All right, cool. I'll take that. Where's it going to come up with anyway? Since they come up on the far end, right? Yeah, it does come up on the far end because that's the only part I coded on the far end. All right. Let's get that one on the far end. See how that comes up. Now, that's supposed to be 100% black, but can't read it because it's not coming up correctly because the surface is white. That's why. So, I'm projecting black, but projector can't read it, and if it's projector mapping. Which, a lot of when people do projector mapping, they think because there's something that's black on the freaking screen, it's going to transfer to the other screen here, because, again, it's seeing black there. No, it's not going to react. It has to be black. Ugh. I just want to play in the library. Oh, shoot. What did you do? You came out of the library? Get back in there. Let me see. Let's get this on here. I'm just going to make some wacky stuff. Uh, let's see. No, 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 no. I need something for the brush. Let's do something crazy for this. I'm going to do some lines outside of this one. So we're going to do two lines over top of that one. We'll call it a white box and do something crazy. I'm done with that. Let's see, I'll get something for the PU for that. I'll take something from their collection. Ooh, that's going to look very funky. I want to look funky Alright, I'm going to change something for the white boxes. Give another straight over top of them. go so we got that going on the outside little stripes in the box like I said much better if you had it in black so kind of gives you an idea but like I said really can't show you it until the whole system's all in black when it's all in black then we could do some crazy stuff with it but right now we can't because again just white there and that has to be swapped over but if it's on black technology, you see that black screen right there? If I can stop getting stuff tangled on my freaking cord. See it right there? Watch this. Let me switch over.
I can change it to whatever I want because black technology will read it. Projector mapping does not work on gray and white screens. It won't read it at all. Because the color will wash up, that's why. That's what I just scanned. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take out the scan altogether, take out the project altogether. Go over here and I'm going to go to my file. I'm going to close the project. This is why we have to coat everything in black with the black technology. Because again, if we're using just a basic gray or white screen, it's not going to read it. How is going to be off? So let's see. Um, let me go over here and close project. And then come back in here and skip. And back up a new screen. All right, can't show you that because my information pops up. Just a second. And when the first time I started showing this off, you know, you get the non-believers, which I really don't care. I don't understand what projector mapping is all about. But anyway, they would say, hey, you're just projecting one solid image. We'll try writing on your screen and see what happens. So let me see. I'm going to come over here. And now we're going to scan the surface. In order for that FLE to read from the scanner, it has to read a white level. If it can't read a white level, it can't pick up the scan. There we go, already scanned out. All right, now we can draw, whoops, whoa. It's like it's still basically processing. Can't go over there yet. It'll tell me when. There we go, now we can process. Now, if the screen is dark, that means the scan can't pick up white levels. So let's see if the scan picked up anything, any white levels. See right here? See that blinding white spot? That's the white levels that the projector can read. The scanner is picking up off the screen. Yeah! There you go! You got people to understand how black technology actually runs. They really don't get it. Let's see if we can write something on the screen. Um, that's just something crazy here. I don't really want to... Let's send it a little bit. Oh, can we do an overlay on it? I haven't, I haven't done an overlay on it. I'm going to just cover the whole... No, no, because that makes it too easy. Let's just write down... Um, let's see. It's a little crazy. I just put the same thing. FLE. Change that. Change that color. Get done with that. Go grab something out of here. Get some straight. Oh, can we get to this right here? Oh, that looks hot. I'll take that one. What about this one right here? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the shiny lights. The shiny lights. Definitely gotta do the shiny lights. Alright, let's do the shiny lights. One of the guys that came over at the apartment, he was a graffiti artist. And basically, he, he drew some crazy stuff with just the mouse by itself. So there we go. See how we got our nice lightning effect? Of our F L E. Let's get another one in there. No, stop doing that. Stop bringing me out of the entire program. All right, let's go put the F L E. We're gonna widen this time. F L E. Oh, I like that. That's an awesome way to put it. It's awesome. All right, that's done. Go bring us up something over here. 
Can't wait for the new stuff. The new stuff is going to be really crazy. Um, let me see. FLE. Let's get something over here. I don't want to worry about this. Where's that psychedelic stuff at? Okay, I'm definitely taking that. Alright, I'll blow that so add some fire to it. Ah, oh, some fire, scarecrow. Add some blazing fire to that. There we go. Got a little E in there. Alright, decorate this real nice. I'm getting better at this mouse. I used to suck at this thing. Alright, let me see. Let's go over here and let's grab something. Let's put another one. F L E. I'm going to put my L right slap in the middle. Do all of this. Bam. I have to come down to the bottom. Oh, this is going to look crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's going to look bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Like you forgot the L. No, I didn't. I'm going to throw it in there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to basically grab something out of our collection. Let's grab something crazy with that. How about this? That right there is nice. Alright. There we go. I'm taking that. Now you're going to see the L appear right through the F, laying at the bottom of the E. Look at that. Look at that. It's psychedelic. All right. I think I'm going to overlap the entire background. Well, no, I'm going to put some dots in there. Put some cool dots in there. I'm going to get my marker. Bring it all the way up. Put a dot there. A dot there. And one over there. Change that surface. I'm done there. Let me get something out of my collection. Come on, Charlie. Can you use this? Nah, I don't want to use that. That's just too weird. I'm going to take something else. Let me see. Well, if I put one of them, could I put a speaker in for one of them? Probably could have. That'd be hot for the acoustics display. All right, got to play around with this tomorrow. Once we get everything done, I'm going to coat a couple of surfaces with this new technology. Something I want to, I'm going to try some stuff with the acoustics. A nice, crazy display. So I don't give me what I want. I'm going to get an artwork. Something crazy to that background. Let me see. Where's the, the magic brush? I want the magic brush. Put the magic dragon. Oh, we could do that like that? Oh, yeah. That looked pretty hot. Okay, I'm taking that section right there. I'm going to create for that section. Yeah, I'll take that. I'm definitely going to take that. All right, let me see. Put the magic dragon. Let me see. Get me out. No, no, I don't want you. I don't want you. Get me out of there. I don't want you. I want this one.
<laughs> I'm just having some fun, throwing some stuff all over the place. I'm gonna take uh, this one. Right. This surface I can cancel, right? So I can cancel that surface out. And I could add in, let me see. Um, I'm gonna do that mesh. We gotta do the whole thing then. We gotta do the whole thing. We gotta go back and do the whole thing. We have to go back and we have to grab the mic again. I need a magic mic on it. Uh, magic brush. Right, give me, um, give me magic brush. Give me, uh, that brush. Give me a magic wand. Alright. Um, can I get a little more there? Yeah, I need to cover all the way over. Alright, give me the brush thing. Give me the brush. Alright. Give me, uh, I'm done with that, yeah. Over that. Please, thank you. All right, let me see. There we go. Yeah, you should have definitely go back. Let me see. I'm gonna do this one instead. Oh yeah, I like this. This is cool. I'll take this. Took that piece out. Put a screen door up. Kind of like a force field. You ever watch Star Trek and you watch those like um, energy force fields like giant nets? That's what we're going to be putting up in a few minutes. That's going to disappear and the other one's going to pop up in its place. It's going to take a while. It's a huge, massive layer has been installed in. One more layer after application. Huh. Now I'm going to be probably over at the other place building my sculptures. Get my sculptures and everything all built. I'll make some little small ones, make some larger ones, and download some whatever I need to do, whatever I have to do. Here we go. There's my grid right there. And I'm going to put this whole like an energy feel, like, like expanding from it. Yeah, uh, you do know that the FLE, the um, Alpha Cinemax. It's supposed to be an all-around screen paint. It does everything. I mean, we can project a map out this stuff we want, but I need something much more of a heightener of color and white levels and contrast. I need some, actually mostly color. We need something with insane, incredible amount of candy coated, delicious colors. That's what I want. And that's what I'm designing with the new technology. This stuff is designed just strictly for one thing, and that's for visual effects. But this technology already has this stuff embedded into it. That's why I said when you got people up there sitting there saying that, oh, we have the same thing as the FLE. No, the freak you don't. My stuff does projector mapping applications. Are you kidding me? That's why it looks so clean, so beautiful. Look at that. It looks beautiful. We're not done yet. Hold on. We're about to put a little, uh, whatchamacallit, minus two. Oh, man, I love this. I want to keep this on here now. 
I'm gonna save this file. I like this. It's got this whole energy field on it. Let's put a little, a little, uh, another display on this. We're gonna add to this right here. We're gonna add an energy, an energy charge field on it. So that's what we're gonna add next. Here we go. We're gonna add this one to it. Oh, this is gonna look sick. This is gonna look sick. You're gonna love this. This is going to look sick. I'm going to add an energy fill to it. All right. Now, how many layers can I add over and over again? As many as I want. As many as I want. That's why I said that. We're going to do a whole entire little cottage. We can actually change the color of the roof. We can change the color of the chimney. We could do it brick by brick. We could do windows, whatever we want. We can make people pop out of the windows, whatever we want. But the entire thing will be coated in all black technology. We just bring it to life. Just like this box over here that is just an um, everyday box coated in black technology, but we can turn it to any color we want. Our energy field is about to come up in a few minutes. Wait, you see the Stargate and building next. Gonna build me a little portable Stargate. We're gonna use invisible technology for that because I need the 50 lunar projector to stand behind it so we can actually have that when the door come out. Kind of like a liquid door explode. There we go. Here comes the energy field. See how those big, beautiful, bright colors that are pulling off that surface like that? Yeah, uh, your screen has to be able to see a heck of a lot of white in order for that laser to connect with that surface and read. That's read white light. If it can't, none of that comes up. All right, so let me show you what happened if we tried this with a white surface, which that's one of the things I saw when I was on the light form. When I was on their page, a lot of people was hitting it with white screens and they were just getting these really ugly images. Look at that. Hopefully that stays up there nicely. We can't wait just to get some tape because I don't have any tape. I literally went to the store, did not buy any tape at all. Oh, we'll find something here. Let me get something to go to the table. But yeah, it wasn't doesn't pull up. And mind you, you're gonna have to do this in a fully lit environment. So that's the thing about projector mapping applications is that you have to understand that you have to be able to read an infinity one contrast level. I know this bugs the daylights out of you great people make these great paints at the end of the day. It bugs you for me to say this, but it's required for projector mapping. You have to have an infinity one. You have to be able to read this. Your screen can't come up gray. Your screen has to come up black for those who basically painted in uh, gray supposed to be a black screen that came up gray it has to come up black this is extremely important for whoever's using this technology to begin with because again the surface is going to be probably very expensive but they're probably going to be coating this up on too if they're using this type of equipment so if you jack this up they're going to take you to court and they're going to sue the socks off you because again you're going to replace that surface that you damage and god knows whatever they're using it is probably going to be something super high tech that they're probably putting that stuff onto so you have to make sure your product works and your gain is going to have to be correct which means you can't be in there with some stupid nonsense or with some game range dumb nonsense you're going to talk to these people on the phone they're going to ask you what's the gain on this technology and whatever you say you better be to back it up because they're not going to touch you you're using that stuff right there that's a little different from home theater it's a little different when you map out stuff with this equipment than what you do with home theater, a fire stick, whatever. It's a whole completely different world right here. So your specifications and stuff have to be legit. And one of the things you're going to have to be to work on is ultra short throw at black. If you can't read on black on ultra short throw, you're definitely going to have a big problem. So these ultra short throws constantly all the time on this stuff. It's much more easier to do. Get a much bigger image, shorter distance away. You don't have to worry about people walking in front of the abstract art. When we do one of these with that technology we're developing, we're using ultra short throws. You know why? No one can't walk in front of it and cast their heads all over the abstract art. 
So you're going to have to have Ultra Sure Throw, and it's going to have to be compatible, and it's going to have to be to generate a 100% black level. You can't read black on an Ultra Sure Throw. You guess what? You just opt out. Now where in the world? We don't have any. Oops, sorry. I bumped into my freaking artwork behind me. And then if you're making, if your product is gray, well, you can forget about it. They're definitely not going to touch you. Because they're going to have a painter on board, and the painter's going to sit there and ask you questions the day. So what's the difference between your gray paint and what I can buy at Home Depot? There you go. Answer those questions. So like I said, it's going to pop up. Projector mapping's a whole different world when it comes to, it's not involved with home theater at all periods. It's a whole different sector. So you have to know if your stuff is going to work. Really? We're going to have one piece around here anywhere? I mean, here we spent the five. We need this stuff for tomorrow. But i got to take packages up tomorrow. Anything for us. Nothing. So, you know, you got people want to copycat and be you at the end of the day. No, you don't, you don't, you're not our stuff. You have to have white screen font register on it. Because they have issues. Because they can't read at all. See that? Can't register. That's why when I went to, uh, when I was checking out the site over at, um, at the form site at, uh, um, What's it called? Uh, Lifeform. Lifeform. Your Lifeform, their uh, projector mapping application, everybody was on white screens. So and I said, like, wow, the colors are so washed out. Yeah. Got to be the fire that up in a fully lit environment. Every single demonstration I saw was in these really dark environments because they were using white surfaces, and the white surfaces had a really difficult time picking up. But black technology, on the other hand, ours doesn't have that issue. We don't consider that stuff to be black anyway. We just don't. Uh, as for goose screen, companies like that, they make, we've had goose screen over here. I've tested the darkest screen. It's not going to read. You have to read an infinity one. You have to pick up a 100% contrast level or projector mapping won't work for you at all, period. And if you can, if you have a black screen, you got to make sure that stuff is tested. They want to see test results. And I mean a lot of test results. Because again, this isn't home theater. This is a whole different application of projector. It's mapping. So they're going to ask you all these questions and you better be to answer correctly. And one of the things they're going to ask you, what is the game capability of your product? Because chances are they're going to be using this in an industrial, fully lit environment. And that screen is going to have to be to register with no problem whatsoever. So if you're using ambient light controlled environments, companies like this that use this kind of technology are not going to touch you. This is why they see our demonstration. They contact us. Because they see us running on ultra short throws and picos and fully lit environments, doing this stuff inside and outside. That's why they contact us. These are not customers or noobs at the end of the day. They're not tell me. These are people that are professional in this field. And they're going to ask you about basically what kind of uh, application that you're using for projector mapping. You're going to have to explain all this stuff to them. And you don't understand the first thing part about it all, to tell you the truth. Honestly, you would. You would have had it on your site by now. Goose screen, they use it. Goose, I've seen goose screen use projector mapping a lot of times. But the problem is, like I said, the screen's gray. And they can only do so much. You can't be in a fully environment because the colors are washed out. You can keep track of that. That would be nice. Yep, see how the black comes out right nicely? There we go. We do that because we got people constantly going to copy us. It doesn't work on gray and it won't work on white screens. That's one of the first problems I noticed. There were some people that were putting it on gray screens to see if they could get it to work, but it wasn't doing too good. It was still fading out.
Now, those of you who make great products at the end of the day, if you sit there and say, no, it's reading color, no, you still have to read a 100% black level. In my program, I must have at least about 16, 17 different programs that require 100% black levels. So if you can't read any of that, it's going to be an issue. That's not going to work too well. See? Can't read it. We're at 4,000 lumens. We're on a 1080p projector in its venue. Oh, by the way, stop saying venue projectors work on gray and white screens because they don't work on gray and white screens at all. I have a lot of venue projectors. None of them will work on a gray screen or white screen because they won't read. Just because if you get a higher lumen count, it's not going to fix it at all, period. So right now, I'm generating a black background. Screen effect is popping up. See how the colors are washing out on the gray and white screen. They can't read. And on top of that, when I get people who come in to buy our technology to do their art designs and displays, um, they do bring it up. What if I use a gray screen? Here's a demonstration showing you what happens if you use a gray screen next to one projector mapping. It won't read it. I'm going to save this because I like this particular design right here. And when we get the invisible version, because there's two versions of that technology developing. One's actually invisible and the other one's not. For the invisible version, I could push that image right through the other side and outside. Because that's FLE technology, the stuff we design each sunlight. It's going to be embedded into it because we're going to need it. So I'm saving this. What we got this at here? Um, yeah, I'm going to save this. This project, but I'm gonna save that one. All right, so let me show you why. We're gonna do a, a simple black transfer. So this is just basically gonna be an object going in and out of the screen. That's it. The background has to remain black at all times. It's one of the programs they have on here. I'm gonna switch you over here real quick. I told you IP addresses and all that stuff pop up. I don't know why they did it that way, but it does. I'm gonna show you one of the effects. That again, why you can't use white and gray screens and why they won't work. All right, so I saved this one. This is also saved to my file. Got that done. I'm going to go over here and skip this. Go over to new program. Get here. Should get our reading in a few minutes. There we go. And now we're going to come in. Camera should click. And now we should have our. All right, so my system is scanning. Again, I'm getting cores wrapped around my switch. I'm going to do a simple, basic design. This is the one, the one I saw that where people were trying to get this object. It's a ball that goes in and out of the screen, but the screen has to remain black at all times. They couldn't get the fire off right because they're using a white screen. Some people try to use darker grays. Didn't go too well because the white levels didn't generate high enough because, again, when you use darker grays, what people do is they mix a lot of black and white paint together. They figure they put white paint into it, it's going to fix the problem. It just doesn't do it at all, period. It just darkens your levels. Oh, no, it does. Well, it doesn't work. Mixing black and white paint together did work at one point, but it doesn't work anymore now. So let's see where we're at right now. Okay, so... Symbol you can see right there how light it is on the screen. They pulled up. Let's go over here and let's get our program we're going to use. I'm going to use, uh, let's see. Matter of fact, I'm going to just cover the whole thing. So let me go over and grab, let me see, marker. I'm gonna cook the whole thing. Infrared coat the whole thing. So that's all coated in infrared. That's done. We'll go over to our surface. Yeah, we're done with that. Thank you. Um, let's go over to what we want to pick over here. I'm gonna go over to this program here.
All right, so here we're going to get the spear. I'll show you the program we're picking up. So you have to be to read 100% black. There are people going out in the form site right there. See right there? That's the program we're choosing right there. So there are people that were going out and they were just turning out the lights to try to get this one to work. All right, so I'm going to come over here. Click on that. This is what we're going to see on our end. That orb pushing in and out. And disappear right back into the screen. The screen has to be 100% black to pull that off. All right, so we're going to click off of this. And we're going to go in here for that program to come up. And then it's going to basically load it up. You're going to see it right here. Now, this is the reason why when we get people who contact us about being able to do this display, you can't do it with the white or gray screen. Because the white and gray screen can't see 100% black. So therefore, they can't pull it off. They can see the white level, just can't see the gray. And that's one of the problems I noticed when I was watching on the form site. People trying to do this and they couldn't pull it off. They tried it on a gray screen, wouldn't work. And of course, they tried it on a white screen and it didn't work. Excuse me. So if you want to do a whole like ceiling and some people want to project a map in it, which is much easier when you're doing a dome. If you're doing a dome and you're trying to get a projector image to fit up there, good luck with that because that's not going to go well for you. Because again, you're going to have to map out the dome in order to get that to fit up there. That's how it's going to work. If you take a projector and you stick it upward, it's going to, going to come up square. It's not going to come up circle. It's going to come square. So you're going to have part of the screen there and part of the screen not there. But if you map it in there, that makes it so much easier. And it's best if the surface is already black with our technology. But if you're doing on a white surface, the problem you're going to have is it's just not going to fit. And I've never met anyone who's ever tried to do a dome um, display of stars or whatever galaxy on basically without mapping it. You have to map it in. So let's remove this out of here. There we go. I right, know we get people who get frustrated and angry and upset and they get better over it. But it's the truth. It's not to say because your product's outdated. It's the truth. Any gray screen. Some people take a purse and they think we're just talking about them. No, listen to when I say this. Any gray screen, including Digital One 2.0 or any of the gray paints we made back then would have the same issue. They won't register. And then if you're dealing with another black paint, well, again, people are a tendency not to go near black paints unless you have a ton of testing backing up the product. You're going to show a lot of testing before they'll touch that stuff. So you have to make sure you can back up everything you say. They're going to ask you all kinds of questions. They're going to go through your site. They're going to read through your stuff. And they're going to question you on your product. And if you can't question, answer me at the end of the day, how are you going to answer them? So you're going to explain everything to them. Because they're going to know much about your product as much as possible, especially when you're dealing with black technology, which is you don't see too many of those screens, screen paints that are in black. And they're going to ask you a ton of questions about it. And you better know what you're talking about. If not, you're not going to get a sale. So that's what you're going to have to be to do. Cool effect, isn't it? Let's get you another one. I'm going to take that one off. I'm going to take that layer off. Cancel that layer. And I'm going to grab me another one. Uh, let's get the crumble wall. Do the crumble wall thing.
Okay, so we're gonna try you again. The tomato on the oh yeah, tomato on the surface and it's a new layer. So let's grab that. Done. Uh, let's go to our here. There we go. I forgot to put the infrared in. Infrared paint job. Forgot to add it in. All right. Now we do a crumble wall effect, which comes up white and crumbles to black. So I gotta read an infinity one. Gotta pick up the crumble effect. So you gotta pick up the white surface, and then you gotta pick up the wall deteriorating. Alright, so we have another one. Come off the layers in. Oh, let me see. Let me change that design out. some goopity goo in there. All right, let's put a slime effect in. So you gotta be to read both, white and black. It's a requirement. Again, I'm gonna lay her in. Oh, let me this we're down there. Give me another step here. So in order to do this, again, you have to have infinity black to do it. Anything that comes up black on that surface has to read at 100%. If it reads less than that, the screen is going to struggle and it's going to have problems. I'm going to do my 3D box. All right, come in here. Let me take this out. This display. Let's see what's the whack a mo. I'm gonna do another layer. Paint it again. Let me paint this in. Break the surface. We're done on the surface. Let's go pick out what we want out of our collection. I think I'm going to go with that 3D box, with that 3D box display. If they have it in here, it's a pretty cool display. Hope they didn't get rid of it. Well, here it is. That's a 3D box display. All right, it's pretty cool one to look at.
See? Now it looks like you can look inside my box. It looks like it's another three dim dimension. See? Pretty cool, eh? Yep. Looks like you can just go right inside the box. That's what I like about projector mapping. Feel. Add the layer over top of that. Don't that. Let's pick up what I want from here. And I think I had something else with that. My force field in there. Kind of a. There we go. Now, after we had done all this and painted over and designed some pretty cool stuff with the black technology, next stage is going to be making a thin 3D hologram screen with the technology. This won't be this. This will be the new stuff we'll be designing tomorrow, which the last of the ingredients should be here tomorrow. So once we get all this coated black and we get the other stuff we're going to be designing coated black, then... um. We can get ready to show off uh, um, that technology and that, that we got the acoustic screens. Acoustic screens have their own coating. All right. I'll put my witch McComb under two. I'll put my, uh, my force field design. Oh, no. I'll take my force field design back. Which one is this one? This one is the neon loop. Yeah, I don't like that one. Like I said, some people take it to heart and they get upset about the whole. Yeah, it is what it is. It it, it won't work. Gray screens don't work, and you can try if you want, but. It's not going to work. You got to pull that black level up. And majority where these this technology is going to be sitting at, it's going to be in a very well lit environment. And I mean extremely well lit, like that. You know, like that um, office building I walked through. It's going to be like that. It's going to be very well lit in that environment. Just like the screen where we showed the fish pushing through the window, that environment there is very well lit. So that screen is going to have to be to push through one end and come out the other end. even at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It's gonna have to be to read. Oh, we should be getting a watch McClellan popping up pretty soon. There we go.
see? You can read on 50 lumens with no problem. So, you're not supposed to run it at 50 lumens. It's not supposed to be able to read, but again, they're talking about white and gray screens. They can't read on it. Because they want me to pick up. So they want you, when you use projector mapping, they want you with this really bright projector. I think the minimum is something like 3,000 when you use this technology. But we could run it at 50 lumens with no problem because our technology can read it. All right, let me see. I'm done with all this. I think I'm going to take this down. Get this ready for our new application tomorrow. Shut that down. Disconnect this. Put it over there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, because you're in, um, you're what you're McCall. You're in, um, you're in, you're not in portrait mode. No, no, where? If we switch over there, we're in portrait mode. Because it switches over from this one. So you're going to have to go back in this one and come out of this program. Definitely gonna have to come out of that program because I don't know how that program works in Bitcoin or not. So you have to do that first. Oh, come on. Like, seriously? Let's see. I don't know why, but you switch your monitors. They work in portrait mode and some of them don't, but I don't know if this is gonna run in portrait mode. So I should have disconnected it here. And I didn't do that. So let me see. Where's the mouse at? Oh, wrong keyboard. Wrong choice. All right, you're done. Oh, it does activate. <laughs> it does. I get this out of here. I need that from my other computer I'm building tomorrow. I'll start working on my Ultimate Retro Pi PC, Submersive PC, which I'm working on next. All right, so this is all good cheese. It's all good. That to work out fine. Think the weather should be good so we'll have a spray on demonstration of the new technology for projector mapping it'll be much more bright and more vivid than what we're using here in the demonstration Technology we're using for projector mapping. Life form. If you find one, you're lucky. Because they are very, very hard to get your hands on. And most people who do have them, if they are selling them, which I doubt they are, are going to charge you a lot of money. Mm. 
even though the company is not making the hardware anymore, they still support software. So I just have software updates. I have to update mine. As a matter of fact, I got some new stuff when I want to check out. But there's other programs and software you can get if you want to do projector mapping application. Some are pretty cheap, some can be very expensive. Depends on what you're going to be working with with it. So. Saw good to go. Got my saw, taking that home with me. Put it all this over here. This over here. I'll be working with this tomorrow. Let me get my. Oh shoot! Let's drag on more them off. Wires, wires, cables and wires, wires and cables and wires. Yeah, but you know, some people get mad at me. And they think that for some reason that I don't know why. You would think that the great screen paints are the future, but they're just not. They've already served their time. You know, they did their time, but they just don't work. Like I said, I can make that stuff. And it doesn't work. And for what I've seen already in black screen paints already, there's just not enough testing done. There are so many tests that are missing from those products that are not, they're not legit. They're missing a lot of testing. But you know, they'll find out the hard way because any company or any customer is going to ask them about their product. They're going to have to know it. If they don't know it, they're going to have a lot of problems. So you know. You can't answer my questions when I come to answer them. I got to ask you, and you have to beat around the bush and give me a bunch of emojis and happy faces and all that stuff. You're not going to be able to deal with the everyday customer or basically anybody else in the field. You're not going to be able to deal with them. You have to know your stuff. You have to know your environments for yourself too. On top of that, so I'm going to be on site on Wednesday, and uh, I'll be on site quite a bit this summer. Same demonstrations I do every place else. I'll do them right over there with no problem. This is looking really good. I love my portrait screen here. I'm going to come over here and grab, let me see. Let's watch my videos in here. This is right here. That's not what I wanted. Here we go. Music. Oh, I mean, it should be playing. I'm done.
Hope you enjoyed. Uh, tomorrow, we we'll come in. We'll be to get ready to get a chance to blast that whole surface with the new coating. I got about uh, 10 sites I'm going to be on on Facebook to the art community, showing them off the new technology and what we've been working on. So, got to go. Thank you all, and God bless.